Hello everyone. So today we will cover a new module, which is hypothesis testing. So in this, we will cover learning outcome one, which is to understand the use of statistical hypothesis testing. So in this session, we will be covering uh, to explain the nature of a hypothesis, uh, to explain the purpose of a hypothesis test, and to outline the steps involving hypothesis testing. First, we start with the nature of a hypothesis. So uh, before we proceed on to this, first we will try to understand what exactly is a hypothesis. So a hypothesis is a tentative and testable statement that proposes a possible explanation for a phenomena observed in a natural world. So basically, it is a statement which tests the phenomena. For example, if we say, if we say the sun rises in the east, so we cannot take that at face value. So we propose the hypothesis that the sun rises in the east and then we test it. So it can be true or it can be false. Then we get, uh, if, if the hypothesis is confirmed, then it will be the sun rises in the east. And if the hypothesis is not confirmed, then it will be the sun does not rise in the east. So that is what uh, is a basic concept of a hypothesis. So it is also a fundamental concept of the static, uh, scientific method and is used in early stages of scientific research to guide investigation and experimentation. So why uh, this component is used because in scientific studies, uh, there is very little knowledge. So a hypothesis is developed, which is then tested across uh, the different sample groups to arrive at a result. For example, uh, let's say uh, smoking cigarettes uh, negatively impacts the lungs. So that is the hypothesis it may start with. And then the scientific study progresses uh, based on correcting data on the basis of this hypothesis. So hypothesis can also be said as a fundamental component of a scientific, scientific method. Then, so in essence, a hypothesis is essentially an educated guess of prediction about the relationship between the variables. So for example, uh, if we say uh, a smoking a cigarettes can uh, lead to negative impact on lungs. So here we have two variables. One is the cigarettes and the other is the functioning of the lungs. So a hypothesis is essentially an educated guess or prediction about the relationship between variables. So a hypothesis is, it, uh, when you go through the different textbooks, you can find different definitions of hypothesis. So it can be an educated guess, it can be a tentative point of view, it can be a proposition that is not yet tested. So there are different definitions of hypothesis that is available in the academic literature. Or it can be a preliminary explanation or it can be a preliminary postulate. So these are the different definitions which have been provided by the academicians. So, <coughs> so next, uh, uh, let's look into the key elements of a hypothesis. So a hypothesis, the uh, first and foremost criteria is that a hypothesis should be measurable. So, so basically what you are testing, it, it should be measured. Second thing is that a hypothesis should be testable. So basically, you can test the hypothesis whether the hypothesis can be accepted or rejected. The third uh, key element of a hypothesis is that it should be clear and easy to understand. So it should not be very difficult to interpret. For example, if you are preparing, presenting your scientific paper, so the hypothesis should be easy to understand so that uh, the general community, uh, the general scientific community can understand it. Then uh, it should explain what you expect to happen. For example, when you say the sun rises in the east, so you explain what you expect to happen. So that is the key element of a hypothesis. Then next it should contain independent and dependent variables. So remember a hypothesis testing is uh, carried out in scientific and quantitative studies. Therefore, uh, it essentially relies on the investigation of the relationship between the independent and dependent variables. So the first and foremost criteria is that 
it should contain independent and dependent variables. So uh, here we look into some of the examples of a hypothesis. The so first one is uh, consumption of sugary drinks every day leads to obesity. So here we have the independent variable as the sugary drinks and the dependent variable is the obesity. So the hypothesis is consumption of sugary drinks every day leads to obesity. Then uh, the second example is that if a person gets seven hours of sleep, then he will feel less fatigue than if he sleeps less. So uh, here, uh, the independent variable is uh, seven hours of sleep. And then uh, the dependent variable is that the fatigue factor. So the hypothesis is if a person gets seven hours of sleep, then he will feel less fatigue than if he sleeps less. And then similarly, we have hypothesis of employees who arrive at work earlier are more productive. So this is again a hypothesis which you can formulate and then you can test using uh, data collection from the participants. Then workplace exercise programs and healthier lunch choices lead to fewer sick days and improved mental health among employees. So this is again a hypothesis statement. And finally, employees who have flexible working hours will report greater job satisfaction than employees who work fixed hours. So all these are examples of a hypothesis statement. So, uh, so these have been presented so that it can make uh, it easier for you to understand. So uh, next slide, we look into the different types of hypothesis. You could have a simple hypothesis as the sun rises in the east. Then you have a statistical hypothesis. You can have an empirical hypothesis. For example, uh, if uh, the alcohol content in your uh, liquor is more than 20%, then it will impact your body organs. So that can be an empirical hypothesis. Then you have a complex hypothesis. Then you have a null hypothesis. So null hypothesis is basically uh, uh, what is the general perception. So uh, there is no relationship between, for example, you can say uh, the shirt you're wearing and your productivity at work. So you know, that is how you can formulate a null hypothesis. And the alternate hypothesis is that when you reject the null hypothesis, then you accept the alternate hypothesis. So these are the different types of hypotheses. So if you uh, go through the study literature, you can find examples and explanations of each of these hypotheses. So now we look into the nature of hypothesis. So uh, how is the hypothesis formulated? What it what are its, its inherent characteristics? So the first is that hypothesis is conceptual in nature. So basically you're just starting an investigation. So you're conceptualizing what is going to happen. So a hypothesis is conceptual in nature. So some kind of conceptual elements in the framework are involved in hypothesis. So uh, the next nature is that it is a verbal statement and it is in a declarative form. So it is just a verbal statement and you're declaring it as a statement. So that is the, one of the nature of hypothesis. Then you have uh, uh, a hypothesis contains some empirical reference, which means there are some empirical investigation that needs to be carried out. So it indicates the tentative relationship between two or more variables. So that is uh, another nature of the hypothesis then it is the prediction of consequences. So like in the previous example, if you give, if you sleep more than seven hours, you will experience less fatigue. So basically what you're doing, you're predicting the consequences. So that is one of the nature of hypothesis. And finally, it is the future or forward oriented and relates to future verification and not the past facts and information. For example, the sun rises in the east is an established fact. So you will not consider that an hypothesis and base, base tests on that. So it is basically future or forward oriented. Basically, if you're taking up a new scientific experiment or you want to investigate uh, any statement, so for that, you formulate the hypothesis. So uh, the general cycle, life cycle of how you test the hypothesis is uh, given over here. So 
the first thing is that uh, you think of uh, interesting questions. Why does that pattern occur? Uh, why is it that people who sleep more than seven hours, they experience less fatigue? So then you formulate the hypothesis. What are the general causes of phenomena I am working about? For example, if a company spends more on marketing, then it is likely to get more visibility. So that is one of the hypotheses that you can formulate. Then you develop testable predictions. If my hypothesis is correct, then I can expect ABC. For example, if you spend more money on marketing of your product or service, you can get higher visibility for that. that. So you have to, you're developing a testable prediction. Then uh, you gather data to test the prediction. For example, relevant data can come from literature. It come, can come from uh, primary data collection from the participants or through formal experiments. So uh, here uh, uh, you need to use statistical testing to see if the hypothesis holds. So if there are any changes, then you refine, alter, expand, or reject the hypothesis. Then based on that, based on the hypothesis, you generate theories you know, uh, which are consistent for most of the available data. So that is how uh, you, uh, for example, if you get a positive hypothesis of people who sleep more than seven hours experience less fatigue. So you develop general theories on that and then you make observations. So again, if the cycle continues, for example, if you see people who are uh, sleeping for eight hours, still they are experiencing fatigue. So again, you think of interesting questions or formulate hypothesis. So this is the general life cycle of how uh, a hypothesis testing is carried out using scientific method. So next, we look into the purpose of a hypothesis test. Uh, so the uh, hypothesis testing, it is carried out for various purposes. The first and foremost uh, purpose of a hypothesis testing is to evaluate scientific hypothesis. So in a scientific research, hypotheses are formulated to explain or predict a phenomena. So like I said, uh, same example of like sleeping for more than seven hours or we can take another example smoking more than uh, smoking cigarettes uh, is likely to impact your lungs negatively so uh, so these type of hypotheses are formulated to explain or predict a phenomena the hypothesis testing it allows researchers to systematically evaluate this hypothesis by collecting and analyzing data so in many of the medical field you see, many of the engineering field you see, in technology you see, there are, the hypothesis is first formulated and then uh, uh, these are systematically evaluated by collecting and analyzing data, especially in the medical field. So this helps to determine whether the observed results are consistent with the proposed explanation. So in a medical field, if you are testing like how COVID-19 impacted the lungs of the people, so you uh, start with the hypothesis that there is no impact of COVID-19 on the lungs because previously there was no evidence. Then uh, as you collect data, if you see results that it impacts, then you reject the null hypothesis and you accept the alternate hypothesis. Then uh, the second purpose of hypothesis testing is to make informed decisions. So it Hypothesis testing, it provides a systematic and objective framework for making decisions about the validity of a hypothesis. So researchers can make informed conclusions about whether to accept or reject the null hypothesis based on the evidence gathered through experimentation or observation. So, uh, so the uh, basic idea is that hypothesis testing is used to make informed decisions. The third thing is the hypothesis testing is used to quantify uncertainty. So it uh, generally statistical hypothesis, they involve the use of probability and statistic techniques to quantify the uncertainty associated with the conclusions. So it provides a measure of how likely the observed results are if the null hypothesis is true. So for example, if you uh, what is the result if you reject the null hypothesis? What is the result if null hypothesis cannot be rejected? For example, a statement of no effect or no difference. 
So it is basically used to quantify the uncertainty. Then you have uh, control type 1 and type 2 errors. So uh, the first let us discuss what is a type 1 and error and what is a type 2 error. So a general uh, pattern of your, uh, hypothesis, hypothesis testing is that you define a null hypothesis and an alternate hypothesis. And then based on the results, you either reject the null hypothesis or you don't reject the null hypothesis. So when you reject the null hypothesis, you accept the alternate hypothesis. But uh, if there is no statistical significance to reject the null hypothesis, then you cannot accept the alternate hypothesis. So type one error is that you incorrectly re reject a true null hypothesis. So that is type one error. So hypothesis testing is used to control the type one error. And type two error is incorrectly failing to reject the null hypothesis. So by specifying a significance level, researcher can control the probability of making a type one error. So we can now next we look into the example of what are type one and type two errors. So in a criminal uh, trial, there is usually, uh, there actually is a favored assumption and initial bias. So the jury is instructed to assume the person is innocent and only decide that the person is guilty if the evidence convinces them of such. So basically, you are innocent unless you are proven guilty. So that is the basic assumption. So when there is a favored assumption, the presumed innocence of the person in this case, and the assumption is true, but the jury decides that it is false and that the person is guilty. We have a, we have a so-called type 1 error. So type 1 er error is we incorrectly reject a true null hypothesis. So when we are assuming the person is not guilty, but the person is actually guilty, then we have a so-called type 1 error. But if the favored assumption is false, for example, if the person is guilty, and the, uh, but the jury declares that it is true, it is uh, that uh, is that the person is innocent, then we have a uh, so-called type 2 error. So, the, uh, so hypothesis testing is basically carried out to uh, remove the biases and remove these type of type 1 and type 2 error. So continuing with uh, what is the purpose of hypothesis testing? So uh, contribution to scientific knowledge. So hypothesis testing is a fundamental tool for advancing scientific knowledge. So uh, it, it gives a very, uh, I mean, acceptable approach for quantitative researchers to present their results and present the findings of their study. So when hypotheses are tested and supported by evidence, they contribute to the accumulation of reliable information and may lead to the development of theories that explain various phenomena. So the key, uh, the key takeaway is that uh, the use of hypothesis testing, it contributes to scientific knowledge. Then, the, uh, then uh, another purpose of hypothesis testing is to guide decision making in various fields. So beyond scientific research, hypothesis testing is widely used in various fields, including business, predominantly medicine, psychology, and more. So it helps the professionals to make decisions based on evidence, uh, whether it involves evaluating the effectiveness of a new drug, assessing the impact of a marketing strategy, or determining the success of an educational intervention. So there are multiple uh, studies which can be carried out using hypothesis testing. So hypothesis testing finds a wide variety of applications. So in your studies also, if you're planning to do a dissertation, if you're doing, uh, planning to do a master's degree or if you want to go for PhD, then what you can do is uh, you should know hypothesis testing very well because uh, when you're doing the dissertation report, this will help you a lot. So now moving on, uh, to give an example of how hypothesis testing is used in business. So when it comes to data-driven decision-making, there is certain amount of risk for the decision-makers. So it could be due to the bias in their understanding. It could be due to flawed thinking or observations. Or it could be due to incomplete or accurate data or presence of unknown variables. So for example, uh, 
a new car company is planning to launch an electrical vehicle. So uh, uh, the uh, there could be many variables and unknown variable could be like uh, disruption in supply chain. So that that can come out of the way suddenly. So, uh, so hypothesis testing is carried out to understand these variables to see what can be uh, what is the impact of each of these variables on the proposed action. So the danger in this is that if major strategic decisions are made made based on flawed insights or if strategic decisions are made based on bias, it can lead to wasted resources, missed op opportunities and catastrophic outcomes. The real value of hypothesis testing in business is that it allows professionals to test the theories and assumptions before putting them into action. So we will further understand this by considering an example. So, uh, so hypothesis testing in business, it allows an organization to verify its analysis is correct before committing resources to implement a broader strategy. So for example, consider a company that wishes to launch a new marketing campaign to revitalize sales during a slow period. So by doing so, it, it could be a uh, very expensive uh, endeavor depending on the campaign size and complexity. So the company can uh, wish to test the campaign on a smaller scale to understand how it will perform. So uh, the company is not uh, going to roll out the entire thing on the population, but on a small sample. So in this example, the hypothesis that is being tested would fall along the lines of if the company launches a new marketing campaign, then it will translate into increase in sales. It may even be possible to quantify how much of a lift in sales the company expects to see from the effort. So pending the results of the pilot campaign, the business would then know whether it makes too sense to roll out more broadly or just to uh, uh, like cut out the campaign or uh, probably uh, I mean, give away, uh, I mean, uh, not to go ahead with the campaign. So that is how hypothesis testing helps the organization. So the third, uh, now we look into the third learning outcome, which is to outline the steps involved in hypothesis testing. So first we look into what is the logic of hypothesis testing. So the logic of hypothesis testing, it involves to state a hypothesis about a population, usually con uh, concerning a population parameter, uh, then predict the characteristics of a sample. If you remember, a sample is a subset of a population, which we have studied in the earlier module. Then obtain a random sample from the population and compare the obtained data to prediction to see if they are consistent. So that is the general logic of hypothesis testing. Now, based on this logic, there are different steps which need to be performed when you are conducting a hypothesis testing. So step one. So uh, the step one is to set up the hypothesis and check the conditions. So each hypothesis test includes two hypotheses about the population. One is the null hypothesis, which is denoted by H0, which is of a statement of particular parameter value. This hypothesis is assumed to be true until there is evidence to suggest otherwise. The second hypothesis is called the alternative or research hypothesis, noted as HA. So the alternative hypothesis is a, a range of alternative values in which the parameter may fall. So one must also check that any conditions needed to run the test have been satisfied. For example, a normal distribution of the data, uh, independence of the uh, variables, and number of success and failure outcomes. So the key takeaway from this slide is that you, first of all, you need to uh, set up the hypothesis which you feel uh, guides your entire study and check the conditions. Now step two is to decide on the significance level. So this value is used as a probability cutoff for making decisions about the null hypothesis. So basically how much of the population agrees with the null hypothesis or alternative hypothesis. So this alpha value represents the probability we are willing to place on a test for making an incorrect decision in regards to rejecting the null hypothesis. 
So the most commonly used alpha value or the p value is 5%. So, and if you want to go for a further accurate hypothesis, it is 1%. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, huh, 0.01, which is 1%. Or if you want to go for a less stringent criteria of alpha, it is uh, 0.1, which is 10%. So that is how you decide on the significance level. But remember, the most commonly accepted significance level uh, uh, by the academicians is 5%. Then the third step is to calculate the test statistic. So for calculating the test statistic, you need to gather sample data and calculate a test statistic where the sample statistic is compared as the parametric value. So the test statistic is calculated under the assumption that none hypothesis is true and incorporates statistical measures of standard error related to the sampling distribution. So the test statistics, it relies that null hypothesis is true. So remember that we have formulated null hypothesis based on certain evidence. Uh, if you see uh, step one, uh, uh, this hypothesis is assumed to be true unless there is evidence to suggest otherwise. So that is the null hypothesis. Now, in step four, uh, we calculate the probability value or p-value or find the rejection region. So, a p-value is found by using the test statistic to calculate the probability of the sample data producing such a test statistic or one more extreme. The rejection region is found by using the alpha value. So, if you conduct any statistical, st uh, statistical test, for example, multiple regression or correlation, then you will have a p-value. So if the value is uh, less than 5%, you reject the null hypothesis. If the value is more than 5%, you do not reject the null hypothesis. So the rejection region is the area that is more extreme than the critical value. And then in step five, you make a decision about the null hypothesis. So uh, after obtaining the results, you uh, make a decision about the null hypothesis. So in this step, we decide to either reject the null hypothesis or decide to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So when you reject the null hy hypothesis, you have to accept the alternate hypothesis. And if you uh, do not reject the null hypothesis, then you do not accept, then null hypothesis is accepted and you do not accept the alternate hypothesis. So here we do not make the decision where we will accept the null hypothesis. So that is a, a key consideration. Now the, uh, the final step is to uh, make an overall conclusion based on the statistical result. So once we have found the p-value or the rejection region and made a statistical decision about the null hypothesis, we will reject the null or fail to reject the null. It, it can be either of the two conditions. Then we want to summarize the results into an overall conclusion for our test. So that is the final step in the null hypothesis. And then you present the research findings based on the, your statist statistical test, where you have either rejected the null hypothesis or you have failed to reject the null hypothesis. So this was just an introduction to hypothesis testing. So that is all for today. In case if you have any doubts, you can always reach out to me at these addresses and uh, I will be glad to help you. Thank you. Thank you.